Welcome to the Cash Flow Couple Podcast, where we go behind the scenes in our short term rental business and reveal tips, tricks, secrets, successes, and failures. Whether you have zero units or 100 units, this podcast is for you. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Wendy Williams, along with my husband, John Williams. Together, we operate Queen City Suites, a short-term rental business here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome back to the podcast. We are here and ready to go. Are you ready, Mr. Williams? I am ready to go. Fantastic. And our topic last time was so big that we did not get through all of it. No. no so we we're going to have to complete the other half today. Part two. Part two. Part de. Part Is that de. how you say it in French? Very good. Très bien. I only know that because of Hot Shots Part de. Oh, yeah. What? It's a movie called Hot Shots. Hot Shots. It totally. It was one of those totally ridiculous movies that I think is hilarious and you think is awful. No, it's terrible. Yes. <laughs> it's the, it's really bad. Yes. So last week we talked about automating messaging, automating pricing software. Yes. Monitoring security cameras, check in, all that, and then changing the door codes. All important. All very important. So if you miss that, Go back and check last week because it was very informative. This week, what we have for you is the cleaning checklist, quality control, the linen system, and the house rules. Okay. So let's first talk about the cleaning checklist. And I know this is actually my cup of tea. Yes. This is this is what I do. And my first thought is, well, no duh, Wendy. Of course we have to have a checklist for the cleaner. <laughs> so so what do you what do you got for us? There's gotta be something more to it than that. Right, right. So well, in the beginning I was I would go into the places and I would clean them first. So I'm the one that developed the checklist. So I don't do that anymore because I think I have a really good checklist and I think it is good for all of our properties. So I don't have to go in there and and clean it first anymore. Right. So. But that's how you were developing the checklist to begin with. Right. Well, in the beginning, you just had the basement. You were just doing it. I was just doing it. Yes. So when you, when you pass that job off, that was like the first thing you had to do, right? Like, oh crap, what are all these things that I'm doing? And it was, They're just in my head. Right. And it seems obvious, but if you don't write it down, it won't get done. Yep. That's right. So we had to write it down and we had to figure out where we were going to put it. Yeah. Because just, just in the basement, there are things that we do that are, you know, cleaning is one thing, but then there's, well, you know, we need to make sure there's an extra trash bag left out down there. And we, in the basement, we actually leave out um, like popcorn and candy and stuff. Because it's movie theater thing. Right. So they have to reset that. And then, you know, where's the cups? And yeah, there was actually a lot more to it than when you think about it, like all the little things you do. Like, for example, that we have that room down there that's separated by the curtain. And it used to be that it was tied back with those ties and people would untie them. All the time. So if you came to clean and you didn't know that, you wouldn't know to tie it back, Right. So it was stuff like that that was obvious to you. So I, I thought that was interesting about that. You know, it's such a small space and you wouldn't think that you'd need a lot. Right. But it ends up being kind of long. Well, you know what? You know what I've found in the short term rental business is that the devil's in the details. Oh, yes. So it's all, it's all the little things that that you need to do that really gives the guests that five-star experience yeah for that, sure that they're expecting so so let's go over how we provide that five-star experience for our guests and we're going to do it room by room so and i got to go really fast so let's go over the cleaning checklist that i have for all of our property it's basically the same thing for all of our properties the cleaning part is yeah yeah so we we start in the room that you usually come in and that's that's the living room normally. So right and 
when when we started writing this down, we had to find a place to organize it. All of the cleaning checklists for all the properties. And we use a website called Turnover B&B. Yeah. So that's kind of our system for how do they know where to go when and all that kind of thing. And it, it, it just hooks to the calendar and it says, here's a place to go clean on this date. And we clean on checkouts, which you should too. Um, but, and then the checklist is part of that. So it comes with, it says go clean here and here's the checklist. Right? Yeah. And the best thing about turnover B and B for me is that you can upload pictures yes. to the cleaning checklist. Yeah. That's something you wouldn't think about putting right? in a, you know, you think about it as just being words like check boxes, but you actually put pictures in there. Yep. Yeah. So, so now you can. The cleaners can see exactly what the space is supposed to look like. Like, where do those decorative throw pillows go? Because you know they don't end up in the same room. Yeah, they might not even be in the living room. They might not even be in the living room. You might find those in the bedroom. Right, all the time. Or sometimes we find stuff in one bedroom that's supposed to be in another. Right. Or the furniture gets moved. Yep. Or other decor items get moved. Right. Because we have fans with children and children play with things exactly you know and they move them around yeah board games we provide board games and sometimes board games get moved up into the bedrooms and yep all the little pieces of the board games so your checklist isn't just cleaning no that's the whole point it's not just cleaning right and if you have somebody that's new that's never been in your space before they have no idea where that stuff goes or what it's supposed to look like right so maybe that's really all we need to say but in the living room Especially at, I think. Well, just give me an example. Like okay. the living room. What is your checklist? Okay. So in the living room, dust. Is there a picture first? There is a picture first. Of what? The the couch and the side table and the coffee table and the rug. Okay. So that's the very first picture. And this is like, you just pulled this from the listing then? Yes. Okay. I did. That's all I did. Because it's important that when people come, it looks like the pictures. Exactly. Right? So exactly. you took a, you took the actual picture from the listing. That's all I did. Okay. Yes. And then what do you actually have them doing in there? Dusting the furniture. They dust all the furniture. Every time. Every single time. Yes. Including the um, ceiling fan. Okay. Yeah. So. What do you have after that? Um, cleaning the crumbs and spills from the sofa. Okay. Because a lot of our sofas are pull-out sofas, like sleeper sofas, and you don't want somebody finding crumbs like down inside the... So you actually have them pull the cushions yes, out. Yes, so they pull, have to pull the cushions out. Do you have like, it in there to pull the bed out too? Yes, or? I do. Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, vacuuming the floor. We also have them clean the window sills. Okay. Yep. And turning on the TV... To make sure that the TV remote batteries still work. Yeah, see, that's not a cleaning item, though, is it? It's not. Yeah. Well, first of all, they got to locate the remote control because it's probably not in. Because that makes them say, is it there? Uh huh. And does the TV work? Yep. And does the TV work? And so that checks the, first of all, that the remote is in the right place because they have to put it back on the coffee table. Right. Does it work? Which means, does it still have batteries? So if it doesn't work, they check the batteries and we have extra batteries in the linen cloth or in the um, supply closet. Right. Right. And they have to put it back in the right place. Did I already say that? I already said that. Yeah, you said that. Yeah. So that's the, that's basically the living room and that's pretty much it. Okay. In the living room, the dining room, um, we have placemats usually because it's pretty. And I like so it. they're decorative. They're okay. decorative placemats. It just kind of gives it that that homey feel. Okay. Really. Yeah. So they need to take all the placemats off and clean it, and then wipe down the the dining room table, and then wipe off the chairs too. Because sometimes, especially with kids, they get sticky. Yeah. Backroom and vacuuming the floor and and cleaning the window sills in there as well if there's windows. And of course, the kitchen, you have to clean and sanitize the countertops and the sinks. And and here's something special. Refill the dish soap. Right. Because somebody has to do that, somebody's right? Somebody's got to do it. Yep. And put out the, the hand towels. Um, we have them clean out the microwave 
and the refrigerator every single time. And if there's any food in the refrigerator that guests have left over, they just need to trash it. Yeah, we toss it every we, time. Every single time we, we just trash it because you don't want to have a guest check in and have some leftover food from another guest. That's just gross. It is kind of gross. Yeah. yeah. So they restock the K cups because we, we supply a, um, a Keurig and we have one of those carousels where we put all the Keurigs cups, the K cups mm-hmm. <clears throat> and the, the creamer um, and the tea. So cause we provide tea as well. Now, they also need to, the guests, before the guests check out, what we have them do, one of the things that we have them do on the checkout instructions is for them to put any dirty dishes in the dishwasher and start it. Yes. So the cleaners. And sometimes they don't. And sometimes right? they don't. And that's something that takes a little time. Uh-huh. So we've actually reversed that on a lot of ours where it's like kind of the first thing you go check. Right. Because if you've got to start it. Then it's, you want to go ahead and have it starting while you're doing right. other stuff. So mm-hmm. by the time you're done, it's done. Right. Yeah. Right. Because that's been an issue in the past. It when has. It, when it was further down in the list and then you didn't find out about it until an hour in. Right. And you're like, right. crap. Yeah. Now i got to sit here and wait for it. Right. So now the the cleaners know that, you know, that's one of the first things that they need to go and check just, just to make sure that the the dishes in the dishwasher are actually clean. Yeah. If not, they'll have to wash them by hand. Yeah. So. And you have pictures um, in there too. I do. I have. So you have pictures for every room. You have stuff for every room. Yes. And every room I'm getting has things beyond cleaning. Yes. It has extra little items you need them to do. Okay, cool. Is that your um, small, like, indication for me to move on from the cleaning checklist well that was the wrap-up for me i mean if you want to go through every other room in the house i have a feeling you're gonna say no no do the window seals (laughs) (laughs) there's a picture of the room (laughs) how'd you know yeah (laughs) okay okay i got it i got it okay so first of all the wrap-up is have a cleaning checklist for your cleaners because If you don't, I mean, they, they're not going to know what to do, first yeah, of all. because they're just going to come clean and that's it. That's it, And right? two, have pictures. Have pictures and use Turnover B&B because it's great. Yeah. There are some other programs out there, there that are. works really well, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we just, we happen to like Turnover B&B. And, and you know, Turnover B&B is great because you can get marketplace cleaners. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, I mean, that's not on the subject of checklist, but... That is one of the reasons we like it is because it does have a marketplace attached to it so that if one of our cleaners or we just need a new cleaner or we don't like that cleaner anymore, we can just go to the marketplace and put that job out there and people will come apply. Right. So they bid on it. Yeah. And, it, and it's a specific marketplace too. You know, it's, it's called turnover B&B. So they know what so, the kind of job it's going to exactly. be. Exactly. So you're not just in general looking for in general cleaners. These are people who have signed up and said, yes, I want to do short term rental cleaning. Right. So I think that's important too. I do too. I agree. So they know what the, they know what the deal is. Usually. Yeah. So the wrap up is have a cleaning checklist, please. And it, put pictures on it so that cleaners know and know what it's supposed to look like. They know where all those decorative throw pillows are supposed to go. They know where the throw blanket is supposed to go. That kind of thing. They know where the remote's supposed to go. And they know that they need to check the remotes and to check the the light on the side table because people will unplug those lamps. Yeah. That's one of the things that's on our list. Unplugging <clears throat> lamps. Right. Cause they'll unplug it to charge or just turn it on and something. see if the bulbs burn out. Yeah. That too. You know, that yep. kind of thing. And we have bulbs. There's and lots of little things it, you just wouldn't think of. And it, the normally. devil's in the details. And it's little things like that, that guess really. Yeah. They'll notice like if they come in and a light bulbs burn right. out, it just seems careless. Right. Exactly. You know, yeah. so. the devil's in the details. So when we hire a new cleaner, 
we like to do um, one of the things that we like to do is do quality control. So after we check up on them, we do that with old cleaners. Well, I was going to say that, but to start off with, when we hire a new cleaner, we do quality control. So what we do is we actually send the runner out there to check behind the cleaner for the first three times that they clean for us. Yeah. And we've done it ourselves too. And we've done it ourselves. Yes. But for the first three times that a new cleaner cleans for us. At least. Yeah. We check behind them just to make sure that they are following the checklist. Because if they're not leaving out hand towels, that's what happened with this last cleaner. She forgot to leave out hand towels in one of the places. Right. Because you'll have people that will come in and they'll be like, I know how to clean. Right. And they won't actually follow uh-huh. your checklist. Exactly. So you have to be sure that you're right. on top of people to say, hey, I wrote all this down for a, everything on this list is for a reason. Right. And I need these things done yes. every single time. Yes, exactly. You know, we actually had somebody come clean one time that said, oh, well, that bathroom does, didn't look dirty. Uh-huh. So I didn't clean it. Right. I'm like, well, was, it, was mm-hmm. it on the list to clean? Yes. Yeah, she got fired. Yeah. So you got to <laughs> you gotta do things every single time. And, and you're right. Quality control, control is the way you, you find that out. Right. And so we have our runner do quality control for us a lot of times uh, if we don't go do it ourselves. So... For the first three times that a new cleaner cleans for us. And whenever we find an issue, then we address it with that cleaner. Yeah, I so don't it's kind just... of almost a training period. Yes, exactly. And then we also do it ongoing too, just and, not every time. Right. Maybe, and it's random, right? Because you never know when somebody's going to check out, but it, it's at least once a month. We have the runner go and check behind the cleaner at each property. So that's a, it's, it's a really good thing to do just so that for you as a business owner, you know, that the quality of cleaning is still up to your five-star standards. Yes. Because people will get careless. They will after Uh, a while. And they kind of get in a routine and they don't. Mm Mm-hmm. A lot of times, it's nothing. It's just human nature, you know. You get, you get kind of, uh, you know, it's not new anymore. So you you don't pay as much attention. You ever hear that thing about like most accidents happen close, close to, to home? home? You know why that is? Because you're because you're not careless. paying attention as much as you are in a right. new in a new place, mm-hmm. right? And and it's the same phenomenon, I think, here. So you, you kind of have to check up every once in a while and. And let people know you are, you know, if, if people know that you're checking up, they tend to do a little bit better job too. Yeah. I was going to mention that too, because it's not only good for you to know, but it's also good for the cleaners to know too, that you're going to be doing that. Yeah. Keep honest people honest. Yeah. To keep honest people honest. That's what one of our mentors, Don Costa says, keep honest people honest. To keep honest people honest. I love that. That's great. I love Don Costa. He's fantastic. So that is the uh, cleaning checklist and doing quality control. The next thing is the linen system, which is what I do too. Yeah. So (laughs) start from the beginning. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So the first thing that we do when we get a new unit is we purchase large, I think, I can't remember what size they are, but they come in gallon bags. And I think they're like 13 or 20 gallon bags. I don't know. I have to go look, but they, but they're color coded. They're laundry bags. They're laundry bags. Okay. And we purchased them on Amazon and um, they're color coded for each property. Right. And we get, when we get enough properties, this is going to become a problem. It is. It we're going to run out of colors. We're going to run out of colors. But for but, now, that's the system we're using, yes. But for right now, it's okay. So each property has its own color. And we purchased three of these linen bags per property. Right. So what happens is the runner gets the dirty linens. This is at checkout. At checkout. Okay. The runner goes to the property. She's in charge of the linens. The the run, the runner is. 
So she goes to the property and she gathers up all of the dirty linens, all the sheets, all the towels, anything that's dirty. And she puts them inside these color coded linen bags. Right. Mm -hmm. And then she what she does is she takes them to the professional laundromat. Yes. Because we have a professional laundry service, laundry service yeah. that, that does our laundry. We don't do our laundry in the unit anymore. Right. So, because it just takes too long. Yeah, that's one thing that's not on our cleaning checklist. Right. <laughs> yes. So, and then when she, so she drops off the dirty linens in one bag, right? And then she picks up the clean linens that are in another bag. So that's why we have more than one bag because one of them is has to have the dirties and one of them has the cleans and one of them's for, you know, extra. Like extra. sometimes we have rugs we need to do occasionally yeah, or right. whatever else. Right. So she drops off the dirty linens and picks up the clean linens for that place. And then the next time there's a checkout, she's got the clean linens. So she goes and takes those clean linens and we have large, um, I think they're called foot lockers. Yeah. They're like foot lockers. You can lock them. Yeah. So we have, and have, and we, and we p- usually put them in the master bedroom closet. Um, but they're large lockers. They're large crates and we put a lock on them. And we put all of the, we put enough sheets and towels in there for one turnover. So she puts all the clean linens inside those foot lockers, those crates. That way, the all the cleaner has to do is go in those crates and pull out clean stuff. And they don't have to worry about it. And there's always a clean set of linens for every place in those crates right there. Right. So, and they're in the master closet, so they don't have to tromps up and down the stairs, you know, where's the, where's the clean linens for, for this bed over here. It's always in the same place. Right. Or where's the clean towels. There's always enough, clean sheets and clean towels in there for one turnover. Right. And if we have any extra, we lock them up in the supply closet. So that's where they are. Okay. And that's how we do our linen system. Yeah. So can I recap that? Okay. Recap that. So basically what you're saying is we have four sets of linens. Yes. So there's one set that's dirty. One dirty. There's one set that's clean. One clean. That's been cleaned. Right. At the laundry service. Yeah. There's one set in the unit one clean. One set in the unit clean in the foot lockers. And then the fourth set is just extra. Yes. And we actually leave that set for the guests yes. as an extra. So yes. it's not in those big bins. No, we don't. We actually leave a set of linens labeled in a clear container in the closet for the guests for accidents. Yeah. For each bed. Yep. So in, in each bedroom, there's at any time a guest is there, there's a set in the closet. There's a set on the bed. And then there's a set in that trunk locked up for the next guest. And there's a set. And then at there's the a set at the, at the laundry. At the laundry. Mat. Yep. So as a practical matter, our, our runner is taking away the dirties, bringing the cleans each time. Because it's hard to say. What, does she go to the laundromat and get the cleans first? I don't first? know what she does. It, 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 it's kind care. of a round robin circle, it right? Is, There's yeah. always something going back and forth. Right. But she's bringing the clean. She's taking away the dirty. And she's not actually putting stuff on the bed. She's just putting it in those bins. Yes. And then taking away the dirty. And then the cleaning crew actually comes in and pulls from those bins for their turnover. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. You got and it. sometimes the cleaners get there first yeah. and they're stripping the beds. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the runner gets there first and they're stripping the beds. So whoever gets there first strips the beds. Yep. But the person that actually takes it back and forth is, is in our case, the runner. Yep. 
Exactly. That's what she does for us. And the last thing that we have is the set of house rules and enforcing them. House rules. Yeah, we, we call it a robust set a of house rules. A robust set of house rules, yes. So I don't... And we've developed those we, over time. I was going to say... Uh, I was going to say when we started, we didn't have a whole lot of house rules. No, no, we did not. Because... We only had we like, started the on basics. Airbnb, right? And so they have some rules. There's a house rules section, and they have some rules built in. They're like little check boxes. You know, can do you can you smoke or not? Yes or no? Can, right. Are there pets there are allowed? Like yes four. or no? Are there parties allowed? Yes or no? And I want to say there's one other thing that I can't remember, but they're not. There's not much. And then they have a text box basically where you can write your own rules in. And so we've had to add rules to that section to cover things that we didn't think of before. <laughs> Cause what we found is that if it's not in the rules, yeah, right. then you really, you don't have a lot of leeway with, well, did, is somebody doing something wrong or not? Right. So even if say somebody has a party in your unit and you call up, say they came off an Airbnb platform, and you call up Airbnb and say, hey, I'm getting rid of these people. The first thing they're going to ask you is, uh-huh. do you have a rule against parties? Right. Because some people allow them, right? So they're not, it's not like an automatic, oh, well, that's obviously something you shouldn't be doing. It actually has to be in your house rules. And I'll give you an example of that. Yeah, we interesting. We have a rule in there uh, about, having unauthorized guests so we don't allow for example if you if you said four people are coming then you can't bring six those two other people are unauthorized guests so what we found was when we asked people about that they would say oh well those people aren't staying the night they're just visiting You're right oh mm-hmm. right well what do you do if they visit until four in the morning that's kind of overnight right <laughs> kind of so then we had to add a rule saying, okay, anybody that stays after 11 is an overnight guest regardless. Or we had to say, hey, the maximum occupancy of this place right. is six. So even if you booked it for four, you can only have two people over. If you booked it for six, you can't have people over because the max occupancy is six. And we do that to control things like parties and to control things like Oh, well, people were just stopping by. Uh huh. Remember that time? Yep. That okay. happened to us in the basement yep. because we did not have these rules. Right. We had a rule that said no parties. Well, these people said, we're not having a party. People are just stopping by. Well, there were like 75 people stopping by. <laughs> That's right. And you stayed up all night And long. I ended up staying up all night, like getting rid of people. <laughs> now, now we would just end the reservation. Oh, yeah, totally. We didn't know. You know, we were kind of naive at the time. And it was the first time it right. was the first time it had ever happened to us. So we didn't realize we needed that rule. Right. And so now now that it's actually we have rules like that and we and some of them relate to others like, hey, anybody after 10 is an is a guest. And then we have another rule that says unauthorized guests are 50 bucks a night. Right. So Extra. here's what here's what it says. I found it. It says any additional guests not stated in the reservation will incur a charge of fifty dollars per night for each extra guest. Yes. So that's one rule. The next rule is the maximum number of occupants is six at all times. Yeah, in this property. You're reading from one of our properties. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. That's another rule. And another rule is only those guests stated on the reservation are allowed on the property without prior consent. Any approved visitors must vacate the property by 10 p.m. each day. Yes. And and that may be different for your property. That's what we have. But those rules intermesh so that we can say, okay, anybody after 10 is now unauthorized. Right. Because we've, like I said, we've had that happen before where, right. you know, I'm not staying up all night watching cameras to oh, see if they no. actually leave or not. Hey, if you're there after 10, that, and the reason we picked 10 at that particular location is that's quiet hours. Right. So we kind of want all visitors gone by then. Well, that's right. Because we have another rule in here that says neighborhood enforced quiet hours between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. Yes. And that's not necessarily something that is in the, 
you know, boilerplate. We had to write that out. Right. You know, it's not a checkbox we can check. Well, that was a business decision. Yes. We had to to define that as a business. And any fines that you're going to impose need to be in your rules too. Yep. For example, if if you have a no smoking rule, what do you do if somebody smokes on your property? Oh, our says smoking on the property will incur a fee of at least two hundred and fifty dollars or the actual cost of remediation, whichever is higher. Yes. So you, you don't have a case if you don't have a rule. That's oh that's a really good say that again. You don't have a case if it's if you don't have a rule. You don't have a case if you don't have a rule. Yes. Because otherwise it's gonna be kind of because what we wishy washy, yeah. And what we found was you need black and white rules. Yes, you need cut and dry rules, right? So that there's no question about whether this was a, uh-huh. a thing that should be fined or not. There's right. no question about you know what's going to happen. In other words, a good pattern for rules. I actually learned it from from somebody else that uh, is very good at rules and collecting fees. But what she says is the the pattern should be expectation consequence expectation consequence yeah you mean as far as writing a rule yeah like violation maybe expectation wasn't the right word but it it should be like here's the rule here's the consequence if you don't follow it oh gotcha here's the rule here's Uh the consequence if you don't follow it okay because you can't just have a rule and then it's like well if you have no consequences then what What's the deal? Like it should say something like this may uh, um, end in your reservation being canceled. You know, this may be grounds for removal. Uh, this is this is a fine of $250. This is $50 per night per person. Uh, tampering with security systems is a $250 fine per occurrence. So you need you need a rule and a consequence if you're not if you know, you're not following it. Otherwise you don't really have anything to do. And keep in mind, especially on a platform like Airbnb, people see the rules four times. They, they see, see the it. Rules yeah. Four they see times? it in the listing. They see it when they book, they see it in your book. That's true. In we your do property. Put it, we do put it in the book in the property. And then they see it one other mm-hmm. time. I can't remember, but I know it's four. If you have, if you have them in your book, in your uh, property, Otherwise, it's three. So they can't say they didn't see the rules, right? And you and you need to have things in there spelled out. Yes, gotcha. yes, including I learned recently. Well, you need to have it in that section that hey, if you're using security cameras, which you should, and on the outside only, you need to say that as well. Yeah, that's a that's another good reason to have security cameras on the outside is so that you can prove that they well, broke you know a rule. If, if, yeah, exactly. And and how do you know if, if something's being violated if you're not monitoring right. it, right? We talked about that last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Monitoring it is... But is, your actual rules are important as well. You need to have not only the rule, but here's the consequence right. for not following it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's really important to point out. Yep, I agree. Good stuff. Good stuff. You got anything else you want to add? Uh, not to that. That no. was that was pretty much it. Okay. Well, that's all we had. I mean, I could talk about this stuff all night, but <laughs> we'd have a really long podcast. <laughs> well, we better cut it off here. <laughs> so talk about the um, community that we have set up. So, Oh, yeah. So if you want more of this kind of stuff, uh, go to thecashflowcouple.com. Uh, you'll see there that we have a community that you can join and... Uh, just this past Saturday, actually, I did some training on uh, smart BNB and automated messaging, and we had a live call, and people could ask questions, uh, and we actually ended up answering some questions about some other stuff too, just because it was asked, which is fine, and we we go for as long as you need it, and uh, you can sign up. It's free actually to sign up for the first month, so it's thecashflowcouple dot com. You'll see the. Uh, sign up there, put your email address, your name in. It'll take it to a page where you can actually sign up and come join us. Yeah, we'd love to have you. Yeah. So we're creating a community of trust and we'd love to have, you know, a lot of people who are, you know, looking to start a short-term rental business or 
already have a couple and they're, and they're looking to grow and they're looking to uh, learn how to operate professionally. Sure. So we'd love to have you. So that wraps it up and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Couple. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, virtually anywhere you might find a podcast, whatever podcast player you're listening on now, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. It helps other people find us. It helps us move up in the rankings. If you did not know, we also have a YouTube channel. It's The Cashflow Couple. All of our episodes go there. But as well, we also put other video content that is not part of the podcast. You can find us on Facebook at The Cashflow Couple. We go live there quite a bit. We share tips, tricks, things that are behind the scenes in our business that you may not see on the podcast. But it's definitely more of a real-time, day-to-day type experience. So definitely follow us on Facebook. If you want to ask us questions or if you have concerns or something you want to hear on the podcast, hit us up on by email, info at thecashflowcouple.com. We love to hear from our audience. We really care about you guys. Uh, we want to see you succeed and we want to hear what you have to say. So hit us up, info at thecashflowcouple.com. So until next time, happy hosting, happy investing, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Cashflow Couple.